barely survived that explosion, but thank goodness we're back. All right, let's get started on our lecture on acceleration and kinematic graphs, unit one, motion. Okay, so we've talked about velocity and vectors. Velocity is speed with direction. In order to calculate average velocity, we would use displacement over time, which is change in position. All right, another way of writing this would be x final minus x initial over t final minus t initial. That's delta x over delta t. As we saw in a previous lab, another way of getting this is calculate your speed, then add some directional information. All right, in physics, we care an awful lot about direction. So we've specified all of the terms that include directional information. Our terms that include direction are vectors, scalars, no direction. So our vectors, we have displacement for length, velocity, right? Velocity, speed, direction, acceleration is the rate at which velocity changes. Force is responsible for getting acceleration to begin with. Momentum, we'll see at the end of the semester, is mass times velocity. Scalars, no directional information. Mass, volume, distance, time. Wonderful. Let's move on. All right. So, what if we wanted to find instantaneous velocity? Well, to find instantaneous velocity, there are really two ways. You can do some calculus with derivatives, or you could, say, find the slope of a position versus time graph. Okay, so here we have some data of two people who went on a run. Slope, if we remember from math, is equal to rise over run, which is equal to change in y over change in x. Right? We'd say y final minus y initial over x final minus x initial. Okay? And so in this case, our y's and x's are position over time. And it turns out that the slope ends up, therefore, being change in position over change in time, which gives us velocity. All right, so the slope of any position versus time graph is velocity. So we can get some information from that. If you have a steep slope, then you have the higher velocity. All right, so let's just take a look at this one very quickly. Which one of these sections on this green position versus time graph has the highest slope? Go ahead and put what you think. All right, steepest slope, number four. This would be where a person is running the fastest. Steepest slope means faster velocity. If we were to, say, have a flat line for our position versus time graph, that would mean position's not changing, right? They're staying at, say, 40. That would be a constant velocity or constant position. That would be no velocity. All right, if you're... In enhanced physics only, this is for you. Otherwise, you can skip it. If we have a velocity versus time graph, our slope, m, is equal to rise over run. In this case, it's change in velocity over change in time. So our slope is acceleration. Okay, same exact thing apply. Higher slope means higher acceleration. Flat slope which means no rise, means constant velocity, means no acceleration. This would be zero acceleration because there's no slope. So what actually is acceleration? Well, acceleration is the rate at which velocity is changing with time. If you were to say run on track, say you start a race here and you go through and you run, as you're picking up speed, right, you're accelerating. When you go ahead and run around the corner, maybe you're staying at 10 miles per hour, you're a fast runner. You're also accelerating, right? Because direction has changed. All right. Back here is where your race ends. So as you sprint this way, you start slowing down. All right. Maybe you've passed the finish line and you're slowing down. This would also be an acceleration because you have a change in velocity over time. Okay, let's try an example. 
A chunk of uranium-235 initially moves with a velocity of 100 meters per second at t equals 10 seconds. At t equals 0 seconds. By t equals 10 seconds, the uranium is experiencing a velocity of 20 meters per second. What acceleration did the uranium experience? All right, let's let you guys try it first. Go ahead and plug into our average acceleration equation. All right, here we go. Change in velocity over change in time. We write that as final velocity. That's 20 meters per second. Minus our initial velocity, 100 meters per second. Divided by our time, which would be 10 seconds minus 0 seconds. And we get negative 8 meters over seconds squared. Why is it negative? That's because the acceleration is in the opposite direction as our velocity. Our guy's slowing down. Okay, so how do we get change in velocity over time? We have three ways, changing speed, increasing speed, changing directions, all right? If you have a acceleration, an acceleration and a velocity that are going in opposite directions, remember we show direction with plus and negatives, then you're slowing down. If the value, the direction of your acceleration and your velocity are going in the same direction, you're speeding up. And if you're, say, moving to the left and your acceleration is to the right, you're also slowing down. So opposite signs mean your object's slowing down, deaccelerating. Okay, how could we get an acceleration that's in a different direction of your velocity? Well, that comes from the following. Force causes acceleration. All right. Uh-oh, not again. 